Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery, and this will be part 417. We're continuing with our lesson title, Fourth Empire Dominion. This will be part 3. Scripture indicates before his fall, Lucifer founded a system. The system at first was not mercantile, became a mercantile system, and it became corrupted and defiled when it became a mercantile system. Turn to Ezekiel 28, 18. <clears throat> what was his system before it was called mercantile? Oh, it wasn't mercantile. It was a system that dealt with organizing the creation in a way in which the Lord was pleased mm -hmm. directing activities in this system which pleased the Lord is the implication that the Lord gave him the understanding to establish that system which was not mercantile yeah All right. yes and and so, I believe it encouraged him. Right. So the mercantile system is a whole new different system. It has nothing at all to do with what you're talking about now. Okay. Because mm -hmm. you said, which at first was not mercantile. Yes, it wasn't mercantile. Mm -hmm. It became mercantile. When it became mercantile, it was corrupted. Sure. As we shall see. Ezekiel 28, verse 18. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries. The word sanctuaries there is basically holy place. Mm -hmm. Comes from the Hebrew term Hebrew term mikdash. So these were places that were formerly activities of purity were undertaken. Would you describe them as temples? No. Because the inference is it's not structures but procedures. Okay. Activities. Behavior, all right. <clears throat> uh, thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of, thy tra uh, of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. So the mercantile system made what was purity, wholesome, corrupted. Mm. Therefore, I will bring. I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. So the mercantile system uh, has always been in the sight of God a, 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 a corruption, an sure. abomination. Sure. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches that I'm introducing a mercantile system of trafficking which led to violence, he brought upon himself a judgment. Ezekiel 28, verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, so in other words, he started off trafficking, he increased it voluminously. And the more he increased it, the more corrupted it became. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Wherever you find commerce and industry, you find corruption. Yep. It first started in Genesis, the fourth chapter. When Cain was kicked out from the presence of the Lord, and he went, dwelt with the giants, First thing he does is build a city. Mm -hmm. The city is a centerpiece for the mercantile system yes. because that's where the activities take place. <clears throat> he builds the city, then he has commerce and industry. Mm -hmm. People are buying and selling and smelting metals and trading cattle and all the rest of that. Yes. Okay, so it goes from a personal existence into a, a business to where it's a, a profit and all this thing where it just immediately goes to the richer and the poorer class immediately. Creates a class system. Right. But the crime is this. Uh, I'll give an example. Turn to Genesis, the first chapter. 
verse 26. Uh, no, verse 29, Genesis 1. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, every tree in the which is a tree of a tree yielding a seed, to you it shall be for meat. God gives the earth without limitation to his creation. You freely, even in Genesis 2, Adam said, freely eat of whatever tree you want to eat of. There's no restriction. Lucifer, what he did was he took what God had made freely and he possessed it and distributed it to other people, limiting their access to yes. what should be freely accessible. Sure. So in doing that, he becomes the authority. He determines how much can be distributed and who can receive it. Mm -hmm. That's never the way God's way. Creates a class system. It creates authoritarianism. It creates scarcity. Because you're taking something from one place and putting it in another place where it's not accessible, creating a demand for that thing. Oh, I want supply that. Supply and demand. That's why God called it a detestation. And that's all you have. Man's life forever after the fall has been centered around the mercantile system. Wars are fought. Lives are lived. People are given a pseudo-reality. The mercantile system is called the world. Cosmos. Cosmos means order, arrangement. <clears throat> Everybody you can see has bought into the mercantile system as a source of existence. People live their lives trying to gain wealth. People live their lives striving to make a position in the mercantile system, which encompasses buying, selling, and entertainment. All of it's corrupted. Wars are fought. Lives are lost. And he uses the term violence. It's exactly what it is. It generates violence because it creates a demand that can't be met. And the person or the group, if they can't meet it one way, they're going to try to meet it another way. Drug trade. Sure. Everything centers around the mercantile. Religion centers around the mercantile system. What is the church? The church is a corporation. Detestable in the sight of God. But let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture indicates, after his fall, Lucifer established the harlot city as a place for his fallen followers. Isaiah 23, verse 13. Prelude to Isaiah 23, 13, verse 11 and 12. We'll read. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord hath given a commandment against the merchant city to destroy the strongholds thereof. And he said, Thou shalt no more rejoice, O thou oppressed virgin daughter of Zidon, Arise, pass over the Chetum, there also shalt thou have 
no rest. This is all basically dealing with the harlot city. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans. Now, the Chaldeans, as we said before, are a priest class. And in essence, the word Chaldeans comes from a Hebrew term, Kazdim, which means Babylonian astrologer. So it's a sorcerer city. Behold, the land of the Chaldeans, this people, the Babylonian astrologers, was not till the Assyrian founded it for them to dwell in the wilderness. They set up the towers thereof, they raised up the palaces thereof, and he, God, brought it to ruin. It's going to happen, but he's looking at this as a future, present, uh, a past, present, and future um, um, statement. So what's taking place here, the center, the masterpiece of Lucifer is the Harlot City. Scripture indicates the Harlot City is patterned after the mercantile cities of the Luciferian era, but would be much more evil than they were. Turn to Revelation 17, verse 3 to 5. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now, it says that she's the mother of harlots. So every city that you find in the world today and existed before in Luciferian time, patterned after the harlot city, she's the greatest. She's Lucifer's masterpiece. The mother of of all harlots, and out of these cities come abominations, detestation. Everything you find in life comes from the mercantile system. Education, politics, society, everything is patterned off of the harlot city's mercantile system. And all the cities are patterned the same way. New York, Chicago, Berlin, Tokyo, they're all harlot cities. I think you forgot London. No, 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 London is the band leader of the harlot cities. <laughs> Interesting enough, the city of London, which is a mm -hmm. square mile as a corporation inside what we call London, uh -huh. is surrounded, it's ringed by buildings with gargoyles and gremlins surrounding it. The moment you pass outside of that ring of gar you're no longer in the city of London. So oh, they're really? telling you that it belongs to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. You find that quite frequent gargoyles and stuff uh, transcend European cities. Sure, uh, the Vatican has them. You know, everybody is. You know, that's the story. That's yeah. talking about who the author of all this <laughs> is. Uh, scripture indicates that her judgment, all the city's judgment, will be to experience the torment of all the mercantile cities. Of the Luciferian, she's going to experience the greatest torment of all the mercantile cities. Ezekiel 26, verses 18 to 21.
Now shall the isles tremble in the day of thy fall. Yea, the isles that are in the sea shall be troubled at thy departure. For thus saith the Lord God, When I shall make thee a desolate city, like the cities that are not inhabited, so the previous Luciferian mercantile cities, like desolate, the people like desolate outside of the cities, in regions beyond time. Like the cities that are not inhabited, when I shall bring up the deep upon thee, and great waters shall cover thee, when I shall bring thee down with them that descend into the pit, with the people of old time, and shall set thee in the low parts of the earth, in places desolate of old, with them that go down to the pit, that thou be not inhabited, and I will set glory in the land of the living. I will make thee a terror. Thou shalt be no more, though thou be sought for, yet shalt thou never be found again, saith the Lord God. He's going to put this city literally out of existence. And even the intelligences that ex that inhabit the spiritual realm in the realms of eternity won't be able to locate this city. That is the rage at which God looks at this thing. Is that the same level of mm, not being able to locate that you would find all those who have been sent into the lake of fire after the beginning of eternity for everybody? <clears throat> I'm imagining a corner of what we're going to call the creation. The Father turned his back on it. There is no such thing as life in there. And that's their lot for eternity. Mm -hmm. When we say we can't locate the city, is it of that nature? Oh, no, it's beyond that. Because as far as um, everything else in the torment regions, God is going to reserve a spot where you can locate them. Okay. You go out on the earth. You have to come down to right. earth. Go out to this spot. And beyond this spot, you look into the torment regions. Right. The lake of fire, outer darkness, people walking around in states of total agony and uh, remorse and torment. But this city, you can't, you won't be able to locate. So it doesn't exist? No. So in the same way that heaven and earth will, will you know, dissipate, we're talking about the same thing? Uh, well, not quite, because it's going to have a special state of non-existence. Unlike the Earth, which is totally out of utility, totally out of um, uh, what would be considered existence, the whole city is going to exist. Mm. It's going to experience judgment. You can't judge something that doesn't exist. Okay. But the existence is so unique that it's set apart from every other state of torment. Does that include not being remembered? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in that respect, because, well, you take a look. Turn back to Revelation 17. Everybody, well, I don't want to say everybody, but mostly everybody is going to hate this city. Right. <clears throat> I'm talking about the righteous, of course. Sure. Verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast shall, these shall hate the whore, shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. <clears throat> For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will. So what we find here, these are going to go into judgment. They're evil, wicked intelligences but they hate uh, 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 an intelligence intelligence so badly that they want to wipe it out totally 
God put it in their heart to fulfill his will and to agree to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God be fulfilled. Now, you find the ultimate aspect of this. Turn back to Isaiah 14. Well, God thinks of the mercantile system and how ultimately it's going to be erased from ever <clears throat> being manifested or detected. Isaiah 14, verse 21. <clears throat> Prepare slaughter for his children. Children he's talking about are the bloodlines that he's mm -hmm. established. The tares, that whole system. Bear slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. Mm -hmm. So you see the connection here. The world is owned by the bloodlines who uh, manipulate the system or under Lucifer's domination. He influences the bloodlines, the bloodlines influence activity that's taking place. That activity controls the human race. All the detestation. They've taken what God has given freely and they have usurped it. They have misused it. They have destroyed life <coughs> and made it an abomination what God initially meant to be beneficial they've turned and made it a ruin so he's not happy about that at all so what we find here it says prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities for I will rise up against them saith the Lord of hosts and cut off from Babylon the harlot system <clears throat> the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. <clears throat> I will also make it a possession for the bittern and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the bosom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. So the judgment that's going to fall on this thing is beyond comprehension for the things that they have done. <clears throat> And uh, the re result of this is that it's going to be effaced from <clears throat> the millennial period. <clears throat> It'll be forgotten. Mm. It will be um, a detestation, which, along with Lucifer, is going to be put in a far, far, far secluded place of inaccessibility and then at the judgment when the heavens and earth pass away and this takes it's place happening. everything is totally erased faced from memory and accessibility everything dealing with the mercantile system <coughs> is going to experience that the Hall city is the, the key to all that the pattern of the Hall city is it's, it, it replicates itself consistently every time no place you can go in this world where you're not going to be influenced by mercantile system. Sure. It's impossible. Everybody on the face of the earth. So that thing has been designed to be a death sentence to the human race. Not only the human race, the nations as well. They're part of the mercantile system. Right. Everybody experienced the same thing but the fall of Lucifer. He brought this thing into existence. He perpetuated it. And it's going to be perpetuated until it's brought down. Do you imagine <laughs> that those who are from... The Did you have a question? Yes. Okay. Would you explain in a little more detail what the mercantile system is? Commerce and industry. That's it? Buying yeah. and selling. When you look at the way we live our lives. We live our lives in a commercial enterprise of buying and selling. How do you get your food? You have to buy it. Where do you live? You either have the mortgage or rent to pay. We live in a commercial oriented world. 
not designed by God, designed by Lucifer. It's called the world system. What is God's system? God never, never has his people in a mercantile system. He has his people in a garden setting where everything is freely accessible. This is what we're going to experience in eternity. A paradise setting in which everything you experience is freely given. The mercantile system is known by its inaccessibility. You can't live over here because you can't afford the, the price that they're charging you for the house. You can't go to uh, any other country because you don't have the money to get on a plane to go there. Only rich people, the elites, have access to everything. Why? Because of the mercantile commercial system. They have <coughs> dominion. They have accessibility over commerce and industry. Who are the leaders, the movers and shakers of this world? Those that participate in the mercantile system. The people in Washington are businessmen. They're not individuals that come from poor classes, poor society that have grown up, work with their hands. They're sons of rich men who are sons of rich men. It perpetuates. They have a system all their own which locks out the average individual. You can't get elected to an office unless you are a rich person because it takes money to be able to get elected. So you have a mercantile system that dominates the whole human race. That's the way we think. We think in terms of, can I afford this? If I can't, I can't have it. Limitation. That's not God's way. God made this world in such a way that everybody would have free access to everything he put here. Abundance. The devil runs this system. Yeah, Mr. Jones, can we please bring it to her attention what the difference between the mercantile system and the trafficking is? <laughs> trafficking is in a <coughs> extension of the mercantile system, which is a system that literally enslaves people. It creates a new demand. The mercantile system creates demand. Yeah, the trafficking system is a system of slavery. Traffic trafficking in women, trafficking in drugs, trafficking in illicit things. It's an offshoot of the mercantile system. It is a, a uh, totalitarian offshoot of the mercantile system. Steeped in violence and... Uh, total slavery. You get into trafficking, murder, slavery, all the rest. That's an extreme form of mercantile, uh, the mercantile system. <clears throat> but everything we, we see, everything we do, we are influenced by the mercantile system. That's why the scripture tells us, love not the world. The world is a mercantile system. Don't fall in love with it, because if you do, it's going to pull you in, it's going to destroy you. The scripture tells us to come out of the mercantile. Matter of fact, turn over to Revelation. Revelation 14. Uh, Revelation 18. 18. Yeah. Pretty sure it's Revelation 18. Yeah, Revelation 18, verse 4. You have an injunction here. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues. Whose sins? Whose plagues? The mercantile system. The city, the harlot city. Everything dealing with the tribulation period is going to deal with a mercantile entity. Either the harlot city or the beast 666 system, both of which are mercantile systems that enslave people, that kill, steal, and destroy. The mercantile system here does the same thing. We live in what's called a debtor society. People live to pay debts. Mortgage Sorry, payments. A, a debtor society. Mortgage payments, car payments, credit card payments, everything in this society exists off of debt. That's how people get rich. You cannot exist <clears throat> in this society unless you are paying a bill of some sort. Owning the owner is the individual that's benefiting, the payer is the individual that's the victim. It's all an illusion to try to get people to think that they're prospering. They're not prospering at all. You own a house, it takes you 30 years to pay that thing off. Sometimes never. That's your life. <laughs> People think that they're investing in something. Well, they spend their lives in front of a screen trying to see how their investment's going from one day to another. That's where the focus is, not on living, but on their holdings. They own nothing. They are victims of a scheme and a scam that takes a lifetime away from the individual. God is not happy at all with this mercantile system. He didn't design it. He doesn't perpetuate it, and his people are caught up in it. That's why the scripture says, come out of them, my people. What does that mean? See it for what it is. It's a death trap. Don't be part of it. Don't go into debt. How do you do? Whatever you get, you save and pay for. That way you f you're free of 